The Final Furlum Podcast is proudly brought to you by Jeff Banks Bet. Join the excitement and sign up to Jeff Banks online now to get 10% off any net losses returned as cash after your first month of betting up to £500 at jeffbanks.bet. You can spend hours studying the forum, trying to work out who you think is the most likely winner of the weekend, who represents the best value. You can go through the racing post ratings, time form, pro form, and then you watch the results at the current and you go... Why didn't I just back everything Ryan Moore was writing? It's such an easy game. Welcome to the Final Furlong Podcast. Great to have your company as we break down some very, very informative horses. And I think some horses that are going to be making a big, big step up into Group 1 Company. Maybe a couple of classic winners as well. We'll break it all down in the company of, is it politically correct to say this anymore? I don't know. The female, Tanya Stevenson. Welcome back to the show. Of course it is, but there'll be uh, others tutting. But I just, uh, I love it. It's, um, yeah, I love... Uh, chatting to you and i uh, can't wait to go through as you say it was a quiet weekend but perhaps it wasn't yeah um, i think uh, it's i think yeah. it's a weekend that's more informative than we first thought um Steam giant the skybet solario stakes group three has been won by some very very good horses in the past including Subsequent Derby winner, Massar, who took it back in 2017. John Gosden's won this three times. We'll talk about his previous winners four times, actually. One of them was not very good. Three of them went on to Group 1 wins. The thing I really like about this year's renewal is that the three horses who are lightly raced and look to have a lot of potential have pulled clear of the horse in fourth who had solid group race form. And hopefully that would bode very, very well for the futures of Royal Playwright, Maturi Bay, and in particular, Field of Gold. The Gosdens have won this with Ravens Pass, Kingman, and Too Darn Hot, who all went on to multiple Group 1 successes. Is he a Group 1 winner in waiting, Tanya Stevenson? He certainly can. He's totally clueless at the moment, Field of Gold. <laughs> Absolutely clueless. And I know I know he's had, what is it, three races already now? But on debut, he was leaning against the side of the store. If you watch his debut at Donny, he literally was apparently... Well, obviously, he was unruly in the stalls to start with, but he was literally leaning. And when the stalls opened, he was still leaning against the stalls as if he was saying, do I go now? <laughs> and then he was just looked after. He went after New Century, I think it was, and was effortless in coming third. He would never have won because he was totally clueless. Then he went to Newmarket, and he just looks like a... Well, you look at Aura him. He's easy to spot, isn't he? He looks uh, quite understandably like Logician there, St. Ledger winner. Um, and he and he strides that way as well. And he came, he, he loved, I think it was, he, he, he loved uh, Newmarket. Then he came to Sandown. And you're left scratching your head because you don't know what to do in this kind of race because I don't normally attribute Sandown as a track that, produces really good horses and that's rather harsh but when you look at the solario it's normally you hone in when the gosdens do have a runner because as you just flagged up he had raven's pass here he had king men he won it with two down hot um and ordinarily i've typed this up before the race itself you look to the place horses to come out and win like you go back to the 90s you had air express place in the uh, solario seattle rhyme compton admiral went on to win a coral eclipse storming home placed in it where or when bandari was well behind so you get the kind of horses they're backward horses that run in this race but then come on in future in the following year the year after and they run really well now having won that new that race at Newmarket uh, Field of Gold, he looked fine there. He looked as though any ground would suit him. Yeah, I watched him at Sandown, and because he seems to have like um, whiter knees than he does his whole grey body, he has this pronounced round knee action. Yeah. So when he was um, asked to kick on uh, about two and a half furlongs out, he's kind of scooping the ground up, which is not, not ideal on the ground he's on. And then it wasn't until he met the rising ground that he dropped that high knee action, and that just accentuates more his clueless. So then when you look back at his dam sire, Sharmadale, that's how kind of Sharmadale used to run. He used to have that kind of an attraction kind of way of running. He yeah, the exaggerated the all, all over the place, yeah. like an octopus. That's yeah, he was like an octopus, and Field of Gold's like like that. He's not like Kingman in the way he strides out. So, and also he seemed to come to the weather because he's just so babyish and 
and green. He seemed to come to the end of his run at the line. And you're going to be asking me about the <laughs> Maturi Bay and um, Royal Playwright. All three look good horses. Field of Gold, it's a head scratcher, I think, for the Godstons. What do they do? Do they lock him away and wait for next year? Or I note that he's got entries, wasn't it, in the Champagne, Royal Lodge, um, or the Dewhurst. Now, me, looking at that race, I would have I would have loved for Field of Gold and Maturi Bay to meet each other again at Donny in October, but they won't. That would have been the ideal race for the pair of them, I thought. Mm. Um, because at least Donny for Field of Gold, he's been there already. Um, and that was his debut, so he made every mistake possible. If you brought him back again to Donny for the uh, futurity, it would have been ideal uh, against Maturi Bay, but he's obviously going to perhaps out of the – I don't know whether he'll go a mile or lodge or they'll stick to the Dewhurst. I don't know which one they – or they could just leave him well alone and wait for next year. He's exciting, whatever, and I think he's definitely going to – for me, win a group one um, <laughs> once he learns a bit more. He also had, because of the Scooby action, had a bit of a high head carriage, but he was so effective. There's nothing else wrong, I promise. <laughs> he was very effective. His action is wrong, his head <laughs> carriage is wrong. But that's good, He's clueless. Because, but that's how good he is. Yeah. Uh, they haven't tampered with any of that. They've realised that he's still very babyish, but he's got so much talent and... Um, looking at his pedigree, yeah, he looks more for me. He'd definitely be a miler. Um, he's got Charmadale written all over him, and that's his damn sire. Barry Mann, the racing manager for Jumont, was talking about going for the Prix Jean Luc Lagardère on Arc Day, which better, better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a really better. interesting piece of placing. Um, he'll have plenty of time yeah. to recover from this, plenty of time to develop more, um, and yeah. the grant. Well. You never know what the ground is going to be like on Arc Weekend. Sometimes it's no, good to firm, sometimes it's bottomless. Yeah. Um, so who knows? But that's where they're going to go with them. His half-brother, Zabak, won a Phillies and Mares listed race over a mile on good ground. He's likely raced yeah. three-year-old sister, Lunar Eclipse, won a seven furlong novice on heavy last year. So I don't think ground's going to be too much of an issue for him. Uh, Jeff Banks yeah. has gone six to one fields of gold for the Dewhurst. Just bear in mind, that's not the plan. Yeah. But plans can change. No, no fair enough. Fair 14 enough, to one yeah. for the 2,000 guineas. So I, I would say that you know, for all those haters who were having a pop at Kieran Schumark only a few weeks ago, including articles written, oh, time to move him on. Somebody else has got to give it go. Yeah. Let me give it a go. This was a great ride. Uh, he kept things simple. He had him perfectly positioned. He was much better positioned than Maturi Bay, and he managed to get going first. Now, maybe Maturi Bay is just not fast enough. It could very well be that, but I thought, and this is biased because I did put him up, um, I thought he was a little bit unlucky. That being said... I thought Field of Gold was the best horse in the race. And and I think he is the one oh. that has the more potential upside going forward. Because to me, Field of Gold, certainly based on what I was hearing and what I was seeing, he doesn't look a two-year-old. He looks like a horse who's doing it, no. but will fill his yeah. frame. Maturi Bay looks more of a yeah. juvenile. He looks more of a now yes. horse. The difference being Field of yeah. Gold had two runs, so had that little bit more experience. And Maturi Bay, just like yeah. on debut it just takes a little bit for the penny to drop. And once it does, he's very, very good. But that penny just took a little bit longer to drop this time. I watched Maturi Bay at Leicester. And he's a, he's a different, totally different type of horse than Field of Gold. Yeah. He's a little terrier. He's a, he's a terrier that wants to give you all right away. Um, and at Leicester, he beat Shah, who has subsequently run really well and finished second in the convivial the uh, most valuable maiden. Um, so that form's worked out really well. And then when you watch him again at Sandown, he was being asked much earlier than Field of Gold to make his effort. And by that, I mean, Hector Crouch was asking him very, very early, come on, come, come and go for it. Obviously, Hector Crouch was in a little bit of a pocket, but he still asked him earlier than that to see when he can then extract him from the pocket and it wasn't until he got out the pocket and then about a furlong from home, he then started a motor. And then you're thinking, oh, here we go. There's there's your stayer. There's your 10 furlong horse or uh, beyond. Um, but he certainly did. He certainly really did motor. And 
and it was a really fair pace that was set in, in the race. And I think maybe it wasn't given the credit was due because unless there's um, a Cornwall or um, more powerful stables in the race, then um, the, it's overlooked, mm. it's half to say. But you'd come into the race and that maybe it's not that fact. They didn't know how to price the race up, as it were. They they thought, oh, Gosden's in this, so there's your favourite. But they gave no credit to any of the runners. Yeah. So the betting hadn't given any traction to anyone to look in and say, what do we expect from this Solario? And now we're meant to pick it apart. But you can only do that if you watch the races they ran beforehand to – see how good they were um and you mentioned the, the third horse in the race which is a son of royal playwright a jeff smith horse who'd who'd won this race before back in 2005 with opera cape uh not that that's kind of relevant but royal playwright is another progeny of arabian queen who she seems to be excellent now she seems what she has produced are all see the fire. Yeah, see the fire. The these um, her progeny are really really good. And raw poor old raw play what right had to do a lot of hard work that in hindsight when you're looking back had he have not had to do all that hard work would he have been closer? They're all three nice horses, and as I've read out to you um, already that. Just because you don't win the Solario doesn't make you a bad horse. I've ridden, read out many horses here that got placed. Even Roman Eyes, Cameco got placed. Um, Rising Cross, she actually ran in this and she got placed. Storming Home, which was group, where or when. So it it doesn't, because Royal Playwrights come third, look at all the placed horses yeah. that have gone on to it's just a whole reel of them. Um, so there's so much potential with the first three home. It could be an absolute gem of a race. And he was very good on debut, Royal Playwright. I think Hilly Turner wrote him, yes. jumped a shadow at one point, um, but still yeah. ended up coming coming clear by about three and a half lengths. Hot shot, I thought, travelled very well for a long way in this race. Yes. And I've oh heard my Richard, goodness, didn't that? I've heard Richard Hughes talk about this horse a few times. He seemed to really yeah. kick himself for running him the way he did on debut. Um, he won... He got up from a very unpromising position to dead heat at Goodwood. I yeah. think he's going to be pretty decent going forward. Tiger Mask is the one who had the the established group form that they had to try and yes. get past. And look back at that run at Goodwood the other day. I think he was actually unlucky the way that panned out for him. But I, I like the fact that he's three lengths back because he's the yeah. he's your benchmark. Now, I know there's a number of people who are looking at this and trying to downplay it and say, oh, it's not a vintage renewal. But I think the reason they're saying that is yeah. what you just said. There's no Godolphin. Run- Where are the Godolphin horses, by the way? What is going on there? Oh, exactly. For the second uh, year in a row, what is going on there? Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. By the way, if that was happening to Aidan O'Brien, there would be chaos in the British media. There would be absolute chaos. They'd be like, oh, this isn't good enough. This is failure for Aidan O'Brien. <laughs> but... And I feel real bad for Charlie Appleby because I think that man yes. is incredibly talented. I don't know Very who nice. is buying those yeah, horses for him, but you give him the ammo, he will fire the bullets. He will hit the target. But yeah. I don't know what's going on. It's weird. Um, but it, it, I think these are three very, very smart horses who will make impacts in group company before the season is out. I'm pretty sure. Uh, Royal Playwright, very high on the list. Matori Bay, really interested to see where... Rafe Beckett chooses to go with him. You mentioned the convivial maiden. When Lydia Hislop was talking to him after Angelo Buenarotti's win, he made a yes. point of mentioning, well, I think this is good form because the runner-up was second to a horse I really like the last day. And that was yes. about Maturi Bay. So Maturi Bay, yeah. he rates this horse. I don't know why he took the wild drift he did in the betting. Probably because no. of your very eloquent, succinct no. explanation of the betting market and they were just making it up as they went along and maybe he was but in as a, as a false price. This was Rafe Beckett's first runner in this race too, which I think says yeah. an awful lot too about what they think of him. I think that front three will make an impact going forward and Tiger Mask is going to prove to be useful enough as well at his level. Um mm. Does 16 to 1 appeal to you with Jeff Banks bet for the 2000 guineas? Bearing in mind, I still have to check my brain to make sure that I haven't misread this. John Gosden has won one guineas, and it was the 1000 guineas back in the year 2000. And even his sire, Kingman, 
was beaten in the 2000 guineas. So with all of that in mind, does 16 to 1 appeal to you? Well, seeing that um, who is favourite for the 2000 guineas. Um, the Lion in Winter? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He's field of gold. He's totally clueless. And um, Aidan Wood, he'd be looking at that and wish it was in his stable. That's for sure. Um, and of, for all the horses, I mean, he's going to have so much lined up, um, so much talent he's got in his stable. Um, but the one horse at the moment you can't measure how much improvement is going to come is Field of Gold. He makes uh, no but... appeal to me from a Guinea's betting prospect because no, of who he's, he's trained a... by. But he might very oh, well end. Record, yeah. He might end <laughs> next season as the leading three-year-old mother in Europe. I wouldn't be yeah. shocked about that at all. But it makes he no might, appeal for the guineas. He might be better, not going to Newmarket, but going to the Curra. Yes, I agree with that. Now, it didn't do Kingman seeing any. What, seeing what Kingman did, you might wait and yeah. go to the Curra. Or that's probably. Or you start him in a guinea trial. Yeah. You start them in. Yeah, you don't go to New Market. Yeah. And uh, you take that. Yeah, he better at the uh, Curra than he would be at New Market. Sounds silly, but. No, I agree. Yeah, I, I, think, got... I think the action, uh, how you've described his stride and his actions, yeah. the Curra would be yeah. much more favorable to him. He's a shark. He he looks like Charmandale reincarnated in a grey horse. Yeah, he, yeah, he does. Yeah. He does. Yeah. It's nice to see that Charmandale <laughs> influence coming out. He was a wonderful, what a horse yeah. for for Mark Johnston what first, but then for was. Side Binsaror. They they did wonders yeah, yeah. with him. Um, I think I think Mark Johnston was understandably very upset that horse was taken off him, um, mm. but Side Binsaror did wonders with him and. Uh, who knows what else yeah. he would have achieved had he not got injured after Royal Ascot. I think he, he would have been he would have been deadly. The Final Furlong Podcast is proudly brought to you by Jeff Banks Bet, where tradition meets cutting-edge technology. And with major flat racing festivals on the horizon and the new jump season about to kick off properly, it's time to leave behind the corporate bookmakers who don't value your loyalty. At this point, you've got to be fed up of their restrictions, endless affordability checks, and losing out on incentives just because you dare to win a bet. Jeff is the bookmaker fighting for your right to bet, giving you the freedom to enjoy British and Irish racing the way it should be, and you can watch all that racing on the Jeff Banks Bet app. So say goodbye to bookies who want you to lose your hard-earned money on their online casinos and say yes to unbeatable odds and a bookmaker that truly values your custom Jeff Banks Bet. Final Furlong Podcast listeners who sign up to Jeff Banks Online using the promo code FFP500 can get 10% of any net losses returned as cash after your first month of betting up to £500. It's an offer you won't see anywhere else. Visit jeffbanks.bet today and enter promo code FFP500 and join the excitement. That's jeffbanks.bet using promo code FFP500 because your betting experience deserves more. I'm a much bigger fan of Aidan O'Brien's Dreamy. And we were all up. <laughs> yes. We were all yes. about this horse after her debut at Goodwood on the Final Front Podcast. So hopefully you were following us in over the weekend um, and maybe you've taken an anti-post interest in her as well. I have, and I'll do it again. Winning debut at Glorious Goodwood, she confirmed that promise with a Group 3 win at the Curra in the same race Aidan O'Brien won last year with Opera Singer. She's a mm. fine, raw, rangy filly, looked unfinished, with plenty of development to grow into her frame. So for her to be unbeaten in two starts, I think bodes very, very well. Uh, she was positioned in third behind the pace setters, one of them being a stable companion. She wasn't asked for her effort until about three furlongs out. She gets a challenge from... So Mark Prescott's filly, who looks like a horse is going to win plenty of races. She fights oh, her off. Nice. Then Gavin Cromwell's yeah. horse is coming at her, Fiery Lucy, and she had too much for her as well. Um, she never really looked like being beaten. And I know Jerry Hannon says, all out. I don't think she was at all. Oh, this was, no, this, was no, a, no. this was a comfortable win. She's the yeah. daughter of American Pharaoh and uh, the Yorkshire Rooks winner Tapestry. tapestry yeah. uh, this, is, this is a serious horse, Tanya. You have to look at her debut, I think, rather than this race. Um, you look at the race that you just sp spoke of in many different manners. Let's start with her debut. Uh, Goodwood for a start. <laughs> Hello. You make it a debut at Goodwood, but then as you said, opera singer did. That's just 
That's well, a brave call. So Opera Singer won brave. this race last year. Aidan O'Brien has won yeah. that. He hasn't had many runners in it. I think he's only had three yeah. runners in it in the past. But he's won yeah. it twice before with Rhododendron yeah. and Alexandrova. <laughs> they're, they're, they're not bad. Um, now, Bouvier, this is where you'd love race IQ because I haven't got it to hand, but Bouvier set a fair test. Didn't set go lightning quick, but set a fair test. So it was asking questions, a fair way out to Dreamy, who was Ryan had sat out on the middle of the track. But you still got to go downhill on your debut. You're going, you're cracking on. You're not a small filly either. You're not a small filly. And despite all her greenness, there was hardly any anxiety or any ask of Ryan to go and get Bouvier, uh, and she did it. She did it. There was, it wasn't automatic acceleration, but she had to accelerate to some extent because Bouvier's cracked on. So you've won at Goodwood. You've won where speed is accentuated. And then she still looked very, very raw, I thought, at the car, very, very raw. Uh, babyish, I thought she was two furlongs out when um, she was looking around because I think there was this wonderful cut of the camera that went close up or head on ish. And she's looking around herself two furlongs out. So she's not really concentrating at the task at hand. And then she went on and won a race. And then you get the head on shot where she's crossing the line in front and the pull up shot. But from about half a furlong out to crossing the line, her ears were pricked, as if to say, am I done now, half a yeah. furlong out? Uh, so um, she's in the rock fell in the Phillies mile, um, and I always think it's like a premature to label anything where they're going next or give them quotes. Uh, she's going to have – she's one with a wealth of talent, Obviously, you appreciate that in the betting between some of these big races, she sits alongside Bedtime Story, Gazelle and Fairy Godmother. That's how much talent he's got in that pecking order. But um, she's totally different to the other three. As I said, she's like a... A uh, happy puppy. Am I done now? <laughs> that's that's how I thought. But whether um, that that was crucial about a furlong and a half, two furlongs out, where the camera cut and you could see that she was so babyish still, and that's even after that question was asked of her at Goodwood that Cara. So I don't get whether it was a that commentary. Sometimes it pays to have it on mute. Sometimes it's pays to watch it with the commentary and then have it on mute and form your own opinion. So, yes, she's very talented. Oh, she's a super talented filly. Yes. Um, yeah. The comments from Aidan O'Brien afterwards were pretty interesting. He was talking about yeah. maybe not running her again this year, that he doesn't have right. to, she's done enough. No, no, no. no, no. You mentioned the, the Philly's Mile. So Bedtime Story is going to go for the Moyglare next. Fairy Godmother right. is going for the Chivley Park where she'll take on Barbouche, which is going to be a fast. Yes. Can't wait for that race. That's going to be a cracker. Yes. Um, yes. He's got Lake Victoria. He's got Truly Enchanting. Yes. He's got Gazelle, who you mentioned, that, or Giselle. Yeah. Um, we'll see, Giselle, she, sorry. Yeah. One of the most beautifully bred horses in training. We'll see what they do with her next and where she, where they go with her. I would imagine if they run her again, it'll be the Phillies Mile or probably more likely yeah. they'll do what Opera Singer did and they'll take her to Arc Weekend for the Prix Marcel Buzak. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Now ground would Another be ground would, decision. Yeah, ground would be the big factor there. Her damn tapestry did all her winning on good and good to firm ground. In fact, she did all of her racing on good, good to firm, or good to soft. Good to soft was the worst she ran on. Um, so maybe that's going to be key to her. American Pharaoh might change that a little bit, but just go on the damn side of things. And the fact that she's run on good to firm and good ground so far, I think that's going to be how they see her anyway. Um, Aiden said. Hopefully she's an Oaks filly. I think she is an Oaks filly. I think the sixteen yeah. to one is too big. In she this day, in this day and age, yeah. sixteen to one about a horse who's undoubtedly Group One material in Field of Gold makes no appeal for the two thousand guineas for that race. 
If that's 16 to 1 for the St. James's Palace stakes, we're having a completely different conversation. <laughs> 16 yeah. to 1 about the Oaks? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I was trying to think, I was trying to think where you go. I think she's not Chester. She's probably York for the Musidora. If they do indeed go for a trial, they might just go straight to Epsom. But she certainly, if you can cope with Goodwood, and she coped with Goodwoods, she treated Goodwoods with contempt. Yeah. Uh, so Epsom's not going to be an issue. So perhaps that was um, the reasoning to go to Goodwood. It was kind of a, a trial to see how she dealt with Goodwood in the face of Epsom because of that downhill and sometimes... Uh, you can get boxed in or not deal with cambers and all sorts. And she treated that the the track was not an issue. It was just um, uh, just a brilliant debut. So yes, yeah, she's certainly because um, she certainly owes. Because it, it got me thinking watching her on the on the second run. Where would you you wouldn't be his Chester one. You might you might go to York, but as you said she might just not even. She probably might not even go for a trial. But if she did, she went. She'll go to York and. It'd be very easy. I wouldn't be shocked if he the one thousand yeah, guineas. The, yeah. the one thousand guineas at the Curra is the race that really stands out as being the most obvious one. Yeah, um, yeah. That's where Opera Singer started out this season. He is. He's not afraid to like even Yalang Yalang started out in the one thousand guineas uh, at Newmarket, mm. and you just you start them over that trip. It'll sharpen them up a little bit. Like love. Yeah. That did the double obviously. Yeah. Uh, minding. I wouldn't be surprised if they try her in the guineas just to see. I'm very excited about this filly. Very excited about her. 16 oh. to 1 with Jeff Banks bet for the Oaks. I haven't had many mm. anti post bets for, for next season. I haven't, uh, annoyingly, didn't pull the trigger on the line in winter for the Derby. Like an idiot. Like yeah. a complete gobshite. <laughs> but I have backed this horse for the Oaks at 20s and I've backed her again at 16s and I think it's very, very fair. This is a paid advertisement from BetterHelp Therapy Online. What are your self-care non-negotiables? Maybe you never skip leg day or therapy day. When your schedule is packed with kids' activities, big work projects, and more, it's easy to let your priorities slip. Even when we know what makes us happy, it's hard to make time for it. But when you feel like you've no time for yourself, non-negotiables like therapy are more important than ever. If you've ever been in therapy, then like me, you know how beneficial it can be. But it's not just for those who've experienced major trauma. It's helpful for learning positive coping skills and setting boundaries. Therapy empowers you to be the best version of yourself. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a registered therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. With almost 5,000 therapists in the UK already, BetterHelp can provide access to mental health professionals with a wide variety of expertise. Visit betterhelp.com forward slash furlong today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com forward slash furlong. This is a paid advertisement by BetterHelp. Give online therapy a try at BetterHelp.com forward slash furlong to get 10% off your first month and get on your way to being your best self. Let's talk about the the other Aidan O'Brien juvenile winner, Ides of March. Mm. He wins the round tower and straight after the race, Aidan O'Brien was talking about going for the middle park. Whistle Jacket's going to go for that race as well. Mm. Full Brothers Little Big Bear. Don't see why you'd stop with him now. He may very well end up over a mile at the Breeders' Cup before the end of the season. He's qualified for that race, but Middle Park would scream being the race for him. Is this a little bit of history repeating? Is this Blackbeard versus the Antarctic all over again? Can he overpower his already Group 1 winning stable companion? Yeah, Whistlejacket, the pre-Mornay winner. Once again, different types of horses. Whistlejacket, more of a, a terrier-type horse, and Whistlejacket beat um, Rashabal in the pre morning so he's already been to all the big parties you've got to forgive Ides of March he hasn't been there yet um he's very he's he's a machine he's a monster um and yet those looking in might be saying what on earth are you talking about he got beat <laughs> but when if uh, obviously hindsight's an easy thing but you can use hindsight in this because you're speaking about the future yeah, who beat him again Ides of March um that was over seven furlongs, mm -hmm. and Ides of March had kicked on and gone to Winnie's race and then hit the buffers. But he travelled so well, and that was over seven furlongs, and the horse that picked him up and obviously was the line in winter 
uh, picked him up and then he was yep. he was beaten by another fin- finished third in the race sides of March. Um a Paddy Toomey was this... finished finished in front of him. Yes. Yeah, began with a C. Apologies, everyone. Uh Round Tower States, Aiden's won this many times. He won twenty five years ago, but He's also, amongst those winning names, are U.S. Navy flag and 10 sovereigns. Um, now, uh, eyes of March, um, he, the Lion in Winter obviously won the Aiken very, very easily. In the meantime, eyes of March went to the Curra and trounced his opposition at the Curra before he came there again. It was a positive front-running ride. And then, um, again, front-running in this round tower. He's literally entered in everything. He is a monster. The way he travels into the races, he's just never seems under pressure over six furlongs. So he is pure gold sprinting, pure gold, powerful sprinting. Now in the lineup in the middle part, we said whistle jacket, Rashabar, Black Falls has mentioned in passing, but he's been off to Keeneland and whether he'll come back for the middle park, I don't know. He ran well enough at Keeneland against the real speedsters. That's the Richmond winner that come from behind. He'll certainly run the race quick enough for Black Force to run from behind, but he could be a danger to them all. Call of Luke, the Jim Crack winner, is in the middle park. They are all very, very good horses, but this is a monster. <laughs> if you can... If you can lead the line in winter for as far as he did and travelled so much better than him for as far as he did, I don't think we yet appreciate how powerful. He's enormous. It looked to me that he he is absolutely enormous. Certainly the head-on view has got so much power here on his shoulders and he's um, a lovely sort. Eyes of March, and I think definitely for the middle part. He ran in very fast time. I noticed the after he got beat when he came out next to the curry, ran a very, very fast time. Yeah. A very, very fast time. And then with that realization, I suppose Ryan knew that he could go to the front with him and they just wouldn't get to him and they didn't. He didn't really have to press a button. So if they look at it and say, oh, but he was this, but he was two to five or something, wasn't he? On Saturday, it was entitled to be so. Um, he didn't really have to press on it, pressure him at all, did he? He's very nice. Well, I think that's significant as well. They could not get enough mm. of him. He was no. even money five to four with Jeff Banks the night before. It very quickly mm. goes seven to four on. Clearly, there was a few people uh, getting stuck into him, and then they couldn't get enough of him. Um, mm. Five to two on, he gets sent off, and that can be very telling. Now, mm. Yeah, look, Coolmore, they're not fools, obviously. They're some of the shrewdest in the business. And a little bit like those Godolphin horses that get exceptionally well back. Like Ruling Court was sent off an insanely short price for his debut. I don't think the Acom would have suited the line in winter, and I don't think it would have suited Ruling Court. The line in winter adapted to it better because of how Ryan Moore rode him. He sent him to the lead and decided, look, we're going to dominate this race, and the rest of them are going to have to be good enough to get past you. And if they are, fair enough. And none of them were. Ruling Court wasn't ridden that way. So I would take a very yeah. positive view of him going forward. Watch him get gelded now before his next start. Um, <laughs> I, I would take a very positive view of him going forward. I think he's going to be a nice horse for Charlie Appleby. But I'm a huge fan of the line in winter. I've only just seen the time form data. Henri Matisse, or Henry Matisse, whichever pronunciation you want to go for. Yes. Uh, 124p. He's in there as well somewhere. He's going for the Vincent O'Brien National Stakes next, is what the talk oh, is. Right. Yeah. Whistlejacket is going for this race. He's 124p. Ides of March is 121, and third only mm. to Henry Matisse and Whistlejacket. Jeff mm. Banks is going, am I right about this? Jeff is going 12s. We know he's going for the race. We know he can improve, and we know how good he is already. He doesn't have to improve that much. That's a bet. That's the mentality of, say, the thought process of, one, you're looking at the middle park, and and you've got Rashibar, who won a Coventry and was second in the pre-morner. You've got the Group 1 winner in Whistlejack, who won the pre-morner. You've got Black Force, who... Um, Completely missed the kick in Kentucky you. last night. Yeah. You watched the race, did you? I didn't. Yeah, able blew to, the stars. Yeah, he ran to Kentucky. Um, ran well, but uh, Goodwood, um, he finished 
they went off so fast it suited him and then cool who fluke that won the gym crack but no offense to cool who fluke who's a very very good horse um he was gonna have to up his pace a little bit more or he'll leave himself open to black forcer or black forcer type horses uh, with his style in front of him but he was brilliant in the gym crack um and then you add on to that the compound that that he's got a defeat in his name eyes of march and see that he faded at against the line of winter without really reviewing the fact hold on he's faded against the Dar- uh, guineas and derby's favorite or the pair of them he was traveling so much better at five furlongs and then he's gone to win his race and then he just didn't last out at that point beyond six and a half furlongs and line and winter oh shocker did yeah <laughs> when you look that one's a favorite for the guineas and the derby and the other one possibly um shouldn't well you had to try seven furlongs because you had to try and see whether you'd be going uh guineas but he's and he might still do, he might grow up, but he's just got too much speed. He's got I'm, too much power, isn't he? He's just this this twelve yeah. to one is too big, Tanya. Uh, I yeah. I've I've got a I know that's because with Jackie there and the automatic presumption that um only the, the uh, number one string can win and that's and there's no there's no pecking order as such really at, at two. Which has been proven to be nonsense. Now, Ryan Moore tends to get it right. He gets it right more often than he gets it wrong. But he chose wrong in the Group 1 in France last year. He chose Illinois. Christoph Sumion was on Los Angeles, and the Irish Derby winner went on to win that race. Um, And there's plenty of other big big race examples as well. He was on Ides of March when Lan and Winter won. Great point. Very good point, in fact. Yeah, Wayne Lorden rode uh, rode the Lan and Winter, who at the time had no big race entries and... No. Um, uh, now does look Jeff Banks is offering 10% on any net losses back as cash after your first month of betting up to 500 quid FFP 500 is the promo code sign up now take that 12 to 1 about Ides of March and if you lose you might get gamble responsibly and all that that's a bet we know he's going for the race he's already the third best horse in the race he only has to improve three pounds on time for him to get to whistle jackets level Whistle Jacket, I think, will be very hard to beat in that race. Mm, 12 to yeah. 1? He's, He's 8 to 1 well. with William Hill. Oh, don't, don't, don't. Do. <laughs> I'm getting too excited here. Ides of March. All about Ides of March. Uh, let's talk about some of the more established horses very briefly. Uh, Tamfana. Why did I overcomplicate things uh, with Doha? I, I think everyone did. I'm, I'm pleased. Like Doha was 15 to 2, 13 to 2, uh, mm. gets smashed into 100 to 30. But Tamfana was odds on and goes off 13 to 8. If you told me on Thursday night, yeah, that Tamfana is going to be 13 to 8, it would have been very easy. Oh, well, Tamfana, obviously, is the horse you back. But no, she was she was odds on when we were talking about her. Um, pretty simple for Oshin Murphy in the end. She was the best horse in the race and she gets a deserved first win of the season. I I wonder if this is just now the trip you keep her to. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, we all saw what happened in the thousand guineas. Unfortunately for me, it happened in the thousand guineas because I ha- was on her that day. Um, oh, no. So- <laughs> Jamie Spencer, turn off the podcast. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just... Um, she, yeah, well, we all saw what happened. And she, if I, you didn't, she accelerated. Uh, if you didn't, no here's here's an audio in- recording of Tanya's reaction. <laughs> think, yeah. That might be Sam yeah. Neill in Event Horizon or Tanya's, I'm not sure which of the two, yeah, but it was yeah, a nightmare. Yeah, yeah it was, yes. Um Horror movies, Event Horizon, a good one though. Great film, um, that yeah, <laughs> very good. Sharon Stone was in that as well, wasn't she? And um, uh, Lawrence Fishburne. Lawrence Fishburne, good yeah. I'm not sure about Sharon Stone, but Lawrence Fishburne definitely was, wasn't she? Oh no, someone. Yeah, it was a good, good lineup. Yeah. Um, we digress, but in a very short distance, he accelerated in the last um, fell on and a half, and we all watched and. After the race, uh, I don't think the actual winner was mentioned hardly. 
it was all what happened to Champagne. No one knew who came first, second or third. Uh, they didn't really get the credit they deserved. Um, it was all about Tam Fanner and where she would run next. And as it happened, it was the French Oaks. If you look at that form, uh, the winner, Sparkling Plenty, went on to be third in an exceptional Nassau Stakes with opera singer and see the far in front of her. The second, Servi, has won since. The, the Tamfana was third in the French Oaks and Aventura, who was favourite for the French Oaks, has also won since, and that was fourth. So if you're doubting Tamfana, that was over ten and a half furlongs of French Oaks. Then she went against the boys. <laughs> Let's have a bit of fun. Let's go to the Grand Prix de Paris over a mile and a half. Let's try her over even further. She was fourth in that. Uh, the winner... Um, Sozy had been third in the French Derby, the second in Illinois, where we had won at Royal Ascot and then obviously gave Los Angeles a massive scare in the Baltica. Uh, so she's run really well against the boys over a trip now in hindsight that would have been probably too far, but she won't really beaten that far, was she? But it just shows her versatility. And, and then to be fair, we she, was, this- she was beaten by... The second favourite for the Ark now, and now the favourite yes. for the St. Ledger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now she came into the uh, Atalanta and she just drifted. She was so, so weak, so, so weak um, in the market. But in the race, Ashin rode her with so much confidence. And there we saw the acceleration that we saw in the Thousand Guineas. And the race, you you felt confident two furlongs out because of the, <laughs> she'd been travelling. You felt confident because you know her acceleration over a mile. You know that she's been racing in in group two group ones over a ten and a half furlongs and a mile and a half. And she sat there travelling, and it's a, only a matter of time. Uh, and in the end, it was a hands and heels ride. It only had to use hands and heels to win that. And we're chuckling about it. But in hindsight, looking back, she should have only needed hands and heels in a group three, considering yeah. um, her group one form. But then why weren't we all on it? Because we just sat back and this can't be right. She's drifting. Yeah, she's drifting. So we now look, do we keep her to a mile? We go to the Sun Chariot. And lo and behold, well, she's in the Sun Chariot. I think she's in the Ark, the QE2, or the Champion Stakes. Lots of really big, big, big boy entries. Um, I'd go to the Sun Chariot. She'll... Meet Porter Fortuna. She'll meet opera singer. See the fires there to say hello to her. In Spiral and uh, El Malka, who won the um, Thousand Guineas. Um, but after that performance, or do you go to um, Ascot and try Temple? I'd stay a mile at the Sun Chariot because they're all not guaranteed to turn up. Or if they are, she's got every chance with that acceleration because she'd have beaten them in the Thousand Guineas. She yeah. won the thousand guineas. I'm not scared of in spiral. Um, I'm more scared of Port of Tuna and Opera Singer, but um, well, very scared of those two. But well, she shouldn't I, be. I can, she I can, them. I can alleviate that yeah. for you. So I can alleviate those yeah. fears for you. I think yeah. Port of Fortuna yeah. won't run. No, Too she's good, she's going know, for the matron, and I. Right. They then want to go for the Breeders' Cup mile. I don't think you're taking yeah. in the Sun Chariot if you're going for the Breeders' Cup mile. No, look- because you're. It, it, it's not an ideal. No, it's far from ideal. You need to be off and yeah. thinking of other things by then. So yeah. that's her. Take this with a pinch of maybe I'm insane. Uh, but but um, I doubt that she'll go for that race. Uh, I wouldn't hang my hat on it, my Circus Maximus hat on it, but I'll, I'll say that. I don't think she'll run. Opera Singer won't run. She's going for the Phillies Arc trial, as far as I know, and then to the Arc. So that's her out of the picture. And in Spiral, who the hell is in Spiral these days? Yes. See, the fire is yes. probably better over 10, which then brings you to Tempa. Have we found yeah. another bet? Is this another? You know the way that person just no, took provided. three and a half grand of Jeff oh. Banks' money that they shouldn't have got? Yeah. Why don't we take three and a half grand, but actually <laughs> win it legitimately? How about that? Yeah. And get 10% of our losses back as well with the promo code FFP500. Uh, that seven to one, I think, is very, very fair. Yeah. 
Yeah, and the progeny of, uh, I just checked up, and the progeny of Soldier Hollow, although he's a very, very, very mixed bag, the one thing you can tell is that all of them are very versatile on the ground. Although the progeny are all a mixed bag of all their abilities, that's not really what I was looking for. I was looking for the ground issues because by the time you get to Sun Chariot, once again, as you say, you could get good to firm or you could get soft. Neither ought to bother Tamfana looking at the uh, back on Soldier Hollow. The only horse I can see in that race that would f- frighten me is in Spiral, and I just don't know yes. who she is anymore. No, and I don't think she knows who she is. And Nashua, don't know. El Malka, okay. Um, They'll go to Sun Chariot with her. I think they said Sun Chariot, haven't they? Yeah. She would be, on her guineas form, she'd be very interesting. Very dangerous. Yeah. As particularly in a race where a lot of these horses might not turn up. So mm. she's interesting, but I I just don't know if she'll finish in front of Tamfana again. No. I think David Manusia has a lot of reasons to be smiling there. Yes. I think yeah. he does. Uh, she's five to one for the Sun Chariot with some firms, but Jeff Banks is going yeah. sevens. Yeah. Jeffbanks.bet, promo code FFP500. Get 10% back on any net losses after your first month of betting and take his money with 7-1 to one Tamfana for the Sun Chariot. Mm. It's an easy game. But the last race I want your opinion on is Absurd. I'm pretty yeah. sure my line was, yes, yeah, screw these two guys. Absurd just wins. And Absurd goes and wins. So thankfully, I did have him in a winning bet, but not enough that uh, uh, we're doing this show from the Bahamas. Absurd, though, is going to be on his travels back down to Australia do they have a more realistic... I mean, what a story, by the way. Ebor winner, County Hurdle winner, now winning a listed race at Chester and back down under for the Melbourne Cup. What a horse to own. What Fantastic. Great ride from Danny Tudhope. Is he a realistic Melbourne Cup contender for Willie Mullins? And why, Tanya Stevenson, do the Irish horses dominate in the staying division, but the British horses dominate in the sprinting division? Please explain that one to me. Very hard to explain. But yeah, to some degree, obviously, there is a sort of a craving to breed towards and train towards the classics. Um, the, the staying, and so, of course, you've got, also you've got Aidan with all the wonderful pedigrees, all towards the classics and what he's aiming to, but also you've got all your jumps trainers, which off a little bit of ramifications of their domination of Cheltenham, they have all these quality performers that have really high ratings that uh, can run well in our flat, whether it be our group races or more so in our handicaps. So you've seen absurd, and that's um, come over here on one of our Chester stakes, a little bit of black type race. But look at the domination of the likes of our Ebor, um, where they've got Magical Zoe, who's been running over the jumps. Um, and so you've got a little bit of the domination of the Cheltenham Festival or Cheltenham Festival type horses that have now come and um, dominated our shores and taken all these great races because there is this is more of a hangover as much as anything of a few years ago and now as well at this current state where anything with a sniff of ability because of the lack of prize money, uh, you find that the excuse is that they send them over to different jurisdictions on these, yeah, from these shores. So those horses that potentially that, that were going to progress to further and further distances have been kept to a little bit lesser distances and then sold off to other jurisdictions where their grass is greener and lots and lots more prize money, whereas some of our massive handicaps that are over the longer distances have gone to horses that will be contesting big, valuable hurdle races, big, valuable Cheltenham races, Aintree races, um, the uh, big Dublin festival races. And so you've got the likes of not just Aiden, but you have Gavin Cromwell, Willie Mullins, Henry the Bromhead, um, Gordon Elliott, they're all coming over, whereas it used to be, it wasn't just uh, the domination of Ireland. There used to, it was the days of, and it was quite recently, about 10 years ago, you had the big oranges of this world. You had yeah. Stradivariuses. And, but even in those times, it was creeping in that you had Duras and Sassantas and winning 
giving you the indication that the big staying ha handicaps and of course the prize funds for these big staying handicaps they attract everyone from uh, both sides of the Irish Sea and of course if you're bringing over these horses with these big ratings from the jumps they can exploit those big ratings uh, with these flat prices you know that's potentially a convoluted way of saying why they don't dominate in the long distances we've always been good at sprinters oh you're you better know. than it um, you're much better at it than we are <laughs> i mean especially uh, now. yeah and that, that used to be yeah but sometimes it's also the, the the timing of the races as well i mean um having looked on was it sunday she's quality winning um she's not that's not too bad that horse because i'm just trying to measure it because in that race was so majestic who was the outside of the whole field in the nunthorpe well she's quality beat so majestic by um a fair enough distance but why does she, she's quality need to come over here or why do they need yeah. to come and try and take on the big guns of the sprinting where they know it's going to be really really tricky um i there used to be the days of soul and slave power where we used to be run a mile trying to take them on <laughs> because it didn't matter who we set, sent out, they used to sit behind hard held and one of them would weave through um, and grab the sprints. It's all cyclical at times as well. Um, that's going to be an interesting scenario or going left field on another matter. What do you do on Saturday? You've got initiating elite status and then everyone, all everyone can remember is believing in the Nunthorpe. But this is a different distance, a different track and different pace you obviously you haven't got pontos you'll have elite status in the race but then unlike pontos elite status and in a they don't stop yeah <laughs> their distances are six furlongs and of course believing is as well but once again they don't stop believing was flying past five furlong horses Ugh. and she's very very talented so um that was a sickening one i stuck with believing despite the yeah, fact that i talked up brad sell on the show i was like <laughs> yeah. uh, what? Um, why do but, the yeah. common sense thing tanya that wouldn't make any sense yeah. uh, but absurd go back to him he is brilliant and he's just everything his versatility should be commended and i know many people are I was saying, oh, my goodness, that run last time was awful. But hold on, take that into context. He was beaten 31 lengths. And they say, oh, my goodness, that's so awful. Which, if you just look at it in, in paper, yeah. But Grosvenor Square won by 20. Yeah. 20 of those 31 lengths, he won by 20 and he won at 10 on. So now you're saying that Absurd was beaten 11 lengths. Now that's a little bit different um, because what are you saying now? Suddenly Absurd is so talented he's going to win an Irish Ledger because that was an Irish Ledger trial. Not that, but also he's come on and won the Chester Stakes and the automatic thing is we're saying Melbourne Cup. Yeah. Was this a he's now taking a different campaign because he's seen what it takes to win the Melbourne Cup. He knows what it takes to win the Melbourne Cup. He's been to the Chilton Festival. He, he's um, he's been so brilliant. He he won hard held at the Chilton Festival. He's had his little rest. He's then come out and finished behind Grosvenor Square, which turned into a farce of a a race. It's a shame that that wasn't shown that race to everyone. This is how absurd run. He was beaten thirty one lengths, but this was the race he ran in, and this is where turning for home. Other than Grosvenor Square, nothing could win the race. So yeah. should all the three jockeys behind Grosvenor Square ride vigorously to get beat instead of 20 lengths, 18 lengths, or <laughs> should they all just finish where they finished? Yeah. Because there was and big gaps. To be um, fair, obviously not quite as uh, not quite as wide a margin, but Vauban was beaten and then bounce back to go yeah. and win the Yorkshire Cup um, and just look at the the level of talent that Willie Mullins has sent over this year he's won at Royal Ascot with Palaccio he's got this yes. fella oh he's uh, obviously there's your Sarich winner he's up oh <laughs> no, nice nicely done no. um, he's 
No. Hip Hop yeah. Delora ran a massive race for him in the Ebor, maybe on a different oh, day would yeah, have placed. Yeah. Would never have beaten Magical Zoe though. And obviously you mentioned Henry de Bromhead earlier yeah. on. She's thriving. Um, and there's this bloke called Aidan O'Brien. And uh, he's got yeah. some pretty decent horses Something as well. Kiprios. He's got a Kiprios yeah. there and he's got Tower of London. And, and he's... Yeah, Illinois yeah. Grosvenor Square. Yeah. yeah, Terms of Endearment has come over and won a couple of Phillies races too of the staying distances for, for yeah. Henry de Bromhead. So, and and yeah. Grosvenor Square is going to be part of Aidan O'Brien's ledger lineup. Um, we believe that Wayne Lorden is going to be on board Illinois um, and somebody, probably James Doyle maybe, will get the ride on Jan Bruegel. I'm sure Christoph Sumion will make a call. Uh, so, look, there's going to be... That ledger is going to go to Aidan O'Brien. It's just a matter of which of those three goes and wins it. Um would you be backing up Sir to run better at, at Melbourne this year? I, I believe this, the, the talk is they just felt it was way too hot, and that's why Vabon didn't run his yeah. race in the Melbourne Cup. Um, I, I wouldn't be sleeping on Absurd at all. I wouldn't. Uh, they must think that Absurd's got a constitution that would deal, because the heat's going to be no different, that yeah. could deal with the heat a lot better than Vabon. Ball. Um, because they've seen that um, we heard Ruby say, didn't we, that it was just so, so hot. Yeah. Well, with that in mind, they must think Absurd's got more of a temperament and more of a constitution that could deal with that heat a lot better. And that's um, why they're taking him. I mean, a lot of com- a lot of credit goes to Danny Tudhope at Chester. Great ride. Because great riding, great riding, because um, he just rode that with so much confidence and then just wait, wait, wait for the inside gap to come. And he's coasted absurd through. Uh, so that's great. But also coasting through, not giving him a race to then, that's even more benefit to the horse if it's going to Melbourne because he doesn't feel as though he's had a race. So he's got even more um, energy and uh, even more fitness building towards Melbourne. It's, it's uh, well, very, very hard to win the race, as we've seen. Um, La Trobe did it. Uh, and then, of course, Dermot Cross Wells counter. done it. So, yeah. yeah. Charlie Appleby's done it a couple of times. Yeah. Don't, yeah. So, um, I admire yeah, the so bullishness. Got the versatility. I admire the bullishness to decide. You know, they we're well beaten last year, but it's like, now we're going to go again. We're going to try it again. I just, yeah, he might, he might. Well, I was about to say that he might not be quick enough, but he certainly is quick enough for that Chester acceleration. Because sometimes you, yeah, they go lightning quick. But the way that he sighed through the field at Cheltenham, yes, he is quick enough because that was reduced to kind of a sprint at race for in jump racing's terms and you just side through the field. The stewards wanted a word with the connections after the race. They said, The winner, Absurd, appeared to show improved form compared to his previous run at the Curra on the 17th of August 2024 when the gelding finished fourth of five runners beating 31 lengths. William Mullen's explanation was that Absurd had come on for the run after a break was noted. Absurd was routine tested, as is always the case. Why did they even bother asking? It's always the same answer. He's improved for a run. Yeah, I think it's right that in a way that they do, Oh yeah, uh, they show that they are asking because there was so much made of it beforehand. I, I'd like it though, Tanya, if they if he just was yeah. to say, "Why is the horse improved?" Because I'm Willie Mullins. That's why I'm doing Willie yes. Mullins. Things. Oh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's why the horse is won. Going through stages is a campaign. We got that wrong. Yeah. Um, he got that wrong. He needed that race, and we are now going for the Melbourne Cup. So hopefully, he'll improve even more, and we'll win in Australia. That's what they should say. Yeah. <laughs> Um, he's a he's a good thing for the Melbourne Cup boys. Have a, a bit, few quid. It's a bit flippant though, but yeah. But there you go. Uh, yeah. We've got the Oaks winner. We've got the Sun Chariot winner. We've got uh, Middle Park. Middle Park winner sorted. There's a patent. There's a patent to do right now. <laughs> You've got your yeah. ten to one. Your seven to one. Going on to the yeah. 16 to 1. That'll keep us yeah. nice and warm over the winter. All right, Tanya Stevenson, I love this. Thank you so much for your time. I really, thank you. way longer than, than expected, but thank yeah. you so, so much for that. But thank you for your time, Tanya. And hopefully we'll, we'll talk to you again uh, very soon. Yeah.
been an absolute pleasure. Love just uh, talking about the sport. So, yeah, thanks for having me on. From Tanya Stevenson and Mia Kennedy, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to the Final Forum Podcast. We'll talk to you again very, very soon. Look after yourself and each other. God bless. The Final Furlong Podcast is proudly brought to you by Jeff Banks Bet. Join the excitement and sign up to Jeff Banks online now to get 10% off any net losses returned as cash after your first month of betting up to £500 at jeffbanks.bet.